guys, um, this is going to be part two of my, uh, me talking about my Discworld collection by Terry Pratchett, um, and I'm going to talk about my two, uh, favorite branches of Discworld, um, and, okay, when I say two favorite, I haven't actually read any of these, so I can't really say that yet, but I'm going to say the two, uh, branches of Discworld that I'm most excited to read. Uh, first is going to be the Witches branch. Um, I have three books in the Witches branch of Discworld. The first one is the first uh, one in this mini-series, and that is uh, Weird Sisters. Um, I'm pretty sure this is a satire of Macbeth. Um, please, someone let me know if I'm wrong, but... I'm, I'm pretty sure, right there. I mean, just thinking. Uh, but yes, I have read about 50 pages of this and was quite enjoying it, but again, I decided to then pause and start with Color of Magic um, for what I read in the Discworld series. Uh, but yes, this is the first book involving the witches. The witches do appear in Equal Rights, um, which I talked about at the end of my last video, but, um, they are not central characters in Equal Rights, so this is considered the first witches book. Okay, so, uh, it says, Meet Granny Weatherwax, the most highly regarded non-leader of a coven of non-social witcher- Ah, uh, okay. I'm going to start over. Meet Granny Weatherwax, the most highly regarded non-leader a coven of non-social witches could ever have. Generally, these learners don't get involved in anything, much less royal intrigue. But then when there are... Oh, ugh. but then there are those times they can't help it. As Granny Weatherwax is about to discover, though, it's a lot harder to stir up trouble in the castle than some theatrical types would have you think even when you've got a few unexpected spells up your sleeve. So, yeah. Um, again, I read about 50 or so pages of this, and it was really good, so I'm very excited to get back into it at some point. Um, and, I, again, I think this is a parody of Macbeth, a satire of Macbeth, but I'm not totally sure. Um, if anyone knows, like, if you're watching this and you're a Terry Pratchett fan, please let me know if that's what this is. Um, if so, I'm very excited, but I should probably read Macbeth first. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure about the order of these. Wait a minute. I think I am. Uh, hang on. Ah! Let me look. Yes, okay. So, next up, I have the third book in the Witches series. I'm sorry, I had to check the order, but this is Lords and Ladies, and this one is a parody of A Midsummer Night's Dream by Shakespeare. So, that's exciting. Oh, and the one in between these two that I'm missing is called Witches Abroad. Um, so, yes, this is the third one. Uh, and it says, although they may feature, oh, that's a review. I lied. Okay. It says, it's a dreamy midsummer, midsummer's night in the kingdom of Lankra. I hope I'm saying that wrong. I mean, right. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but music and romance aren't the only things filling the air. Magic and mischief are afoot threatening to spoil the royal wedding of King Varence and his favorite witch, Magret Garlic. Invaded by some fairy trash, soon it won't be only champagne that's flowing through the streets. So, yes, um, pretty sure this is a parody of Midsummer Night's Dream, and I'm just, I'm so excited. And, okay, I don't exactly like the, co the color of this cover, but I really like that helmet. I think it's really funny. So, yes. Really looking forward to this when I get to it. And then we have my favorite one in this. Well, actually, Weird Sisters is probably my favorite, but this is probably my second favorite um, that I'm so excited to read, and that is Masquerade. Can you guys guess what this is a parody of? It is a satire of Phantom of the Opera, which, if you guys know me at all, if you've watched my videos 
uh, a lot, then you know that Phantom of the Opera is one of my favorite things in the entire world. I love the book. I love the musical. I love the movie. Um, basically, the only two Phantom of the Opera adaptations that I've ever seen that I hated were the 1925 Lon Chaney, and it's because I realized I'm not good with silent films, because I talk too much, and uh, the 1989 Robert England one, because it was a terrible movie and should never have been made, and it was gross. But anyway, so I love Phantom of the Opera, so naturally, since this is a parody of it, and it has to do with this world, I just love. I'm sorry. I'm so excited about this. Okay. So, it says, The Opera House, Ankh-Morpork, Pork, a huge rambling building where innocent young sopranos are lured to their destiny by a strangely familiar evil mastermind in a hideously deformed evening dress. At least, he hopes so, but Granny Weatherwax, Discworld's most famous witch, is in the audience, and she doesn't hold well with that sort of thing. So, there's going to be trouble... But, nevertheless, a good evening's entertainment with murders you can really hum. Yeah, I don't really understand that last bit, but it's still... I'm so excited. And again, this is one of the Josh Kirby... Um, well, this is a uh, UK edition where the cover illustration is all around the whole book, which I think is gorgeous, and um, this is one of the covers that was done by Josh Kirby when he was still alive um, before he very sadly passed away in 2001 because his artwork is strange and colorful and beautiful and amazing. Um, so that was sad. But yes, I'm very glad that I have this edition. Okay, and then um, we have the favorite, my favorite character, or the character that I'm so excited to get to know in Discworld, who I think is going to be the most interesting, is Death. Um, because Death is a real... He's a real character. Like, being the Grim Reaper is his job. And it's just... Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Uh, the ones I am missing from this series are Mort, which is the first one. Um, Reaper Man, I technically have, but I'm giving away because it's in such bad condition. That's the second one. And Soul Music is the third one. Um, and I'm getting all three of those hopefully around Christmas time, but I might wait and get them later. Um, but, so the two I have in the Death series are actually a lot further into the series. They are books four and five. And number four is Hogfather. Um, I got this from the Book Depository last year, and uh, I really love this cover. That's the reason why I got this edition, is because I thought the cover was so much cooler than the American one. Um, and here's what this one says. It says, Susan had never hung up a stocking. She'd never put a tooth under her pillow in the serious expectation that a dentally inclined fairy would turn up. It wasn't that her parents didn't believe in such things. They didn't need to believe in them. They knew they existed. They just wished they didn't. It's the night before Hog's Watch, and it's too quiet. Where in Where's the big jolly fat man? There are those who believe and those who don't. But either way, it's not right to find death creeping down the chimneys and trying to say ho ho ho. Superstition makes things work in Discworld, and undermining it can have consequences particularly on the last night of the year when the time is turning. Susan, the gothic governess, has got to sort everything out by morning. Otherwise, there won't be a morning ever again. Um, yeah, I have the um, BBC adaptation of this. Uh, it's a miniseries, and it's got Michelle Dockery starring as Susan and... I love her. Um, I saw her in Downton Abbey and Turn of the Screw, and I just think that she's fantastic. Um, but yeah, uh, I started watching that and completely loved it, so I ordered the book. Um, and it also, it kind of started not working about halfway through, so I decided that meant that I was supposed to read the book before I watched it. So, yes, um, 
I want to read this at some point. I may, um, since all of these books can be read as standalones, I may read this one at Christmas time just by itself. Um, I haven't decided yet, but yeah, we'll see. And then, um, the fifth one that I have is Thief of Time. Uh, even though I got this new copy the other day, um, this was technically the first Discworld book that I ever owned. Um, I got a copy in Powell's, um, two years ago and then decided that, uh, that copy was too destroyed for me to keep it and that I really wanted a new copy. Um, but yeah, that was, my friend Megan is the one who recommended the Discworld series to me, and I told her, okay, I really want to read this, but I want you to pick out one for me. Like, I want you to tell me what you think is a really good one based on what you know that I like. And she recommended Thief of Time to me. Um, and okay, I think, I think that this one is a parody of something, but I don't know what. Um, and I tried to look it up on Google and couldn't find it. It could be that this is one of the only Discworld books that is not a parody of another work, but I just, I would really like to know. Um, so if you guys, uh, if you watch my channel and you're a Terry Pratchett fan and you know that Thief of Time is a parody of something, please let me know what it is because I could have sworn that I remembered that it was and I don't know. Um, but anyway, so I will read you guys the back of this one. It says, um, everybody wants more time, which is why on Discworld only the experts can manage it. The venerable monks of history who store it and pump it from where it's wasted, like underwater. How much time does a codfish really need to places like cities where busy denizens lament? Oh, where does the time go? Yeah, I don't know why I did that in a voice. Uh, while everyone always talks about slowing down, one young horologist, uh, horologist, yeah, um, is about to do the unthinkable. He's going to stop, well, stop time, that is, by building the world's first truly accurate clock, which means esteemed history monk Lu, Lu Z, um, it's L-U-T-Z-E, I don't know how to say that. Uh, and his apprentice, Lob Sang Lud, have to put on some speed to stop the timepiece before it starts. For if the perfect clock starts ticking, time, as we know it, will end, and then the trouble will really begin. So yes, this is the fifth one in that branch, um, or that saga section of Discworld. Um, and yeah. Those are the two, uh, I guess, mini sections of Discworld that I am most excited to read about, The Witches and Death, just because I think the witches are going to be hilarious. And I think Death is going to be funny, but I think he's also going to be the most interesting to read about. Um, so, yes. Uh, those are all of my Discworld books. I'm sorry that this was, that these videos took so long. But um, please let me know if you've read any of these, what you think, um, if there are any other branches of Discworld you guys think that I should check out because um, you think I would like them. Uh, and thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.